the coordinates of B as calculated are 15,000 and 5,000 15,000 comma 5,000 the coordinates of C are 12,000 comma 8,000 and the coordinates of D as computed are 6,000 and 12,000 6,000 comma 12,000 computing the contribution value at each point uh, by substituting 20 into 15,000 plus 40 into 5,000 this will give us a total amount of 20 into 15,000 plus 40 into 5,000 equals to 500,000 substituting C's values 20 into 12,000 plus 40 into 8,000 this will give us 20 into 12,000 plus 40 into 8,000 equal to 560,000 and value of D is 20 into 6,000 plus 40 into 12,000 20 into 6000 plus 40 into 12000 this is equal to 600,000 therefore we can say that the profit and contributions are maximized at point D which is reducing 6000 units of P and 12000 units of S reading the question once again the question said determine the optimal production plan which means the units of P and S that we should sell which we have calculated for a typical period assuming that H is seeking to maximize the contribution earned and you should use a linear programming uh, graph identify the feasible region between that an optimal point and accurate calcul accurately calculate the maximum contribution that could be earned using whichever equations you need so the maximum contribution and the number of units is produce 6000 units of P 12000 units of S and your maximum contribution will be 600,000 rupees part C is now important part uh, C said some of the craftsmen have offered to work overtime provided that they are paid double time for the extra hours over the contracted 12,000 hours. HC has estimated that up to 1,200 hours per period could be gained in this way. The thing is that uh, we had limited craftsman time which were 12,000 hours stated over here. But the craftsmen uh, now say that they will be willing to work over time. But they have a condition and the condition is that they should receive double the current pay. Currently they are being paid at rupees 18 per hour. So they want double rate which is 36. They want 36 rupees per hour to be paid and they will be willing to work for uh, overtime. And it says the uh, HA has estimated that up to 1200 per uh, hours per period can be gained or could be gained in this way. Explain the meaning of a shadow price or dual price and calculate the shadow price of both the labor and the material. This is an important part and an important concept which is known as shadow price. Well basically first of all we should know that if we produce 6000 of units of P and 12000 units of S how much labor time and ash are we consuming the question is stated that each unit of pool queues will need 0.5 hours 
and each unit of snooker cues will need 0.75 hours so the total labor time is 6000 in 2.5 plus 12000 into 0 0.75 this totals to 12,000 hours. Currently, our profit maximization situation, uh, situation, situation is producing 6,000 units of P and 12,000 units of S, and it consumes 12,000 craftsmen or labor hours. And we actually had this much hours. If you look back at, uh, back at paragraph number three, it said that you have 12,000 hours available. So you, you utilized all the available labor hours for these productions. Now, did we utilize the complete or entire ashes? If you go back to paragraph number one, it said that the supply of ash is restricted to 5400 kg. You had 5400 kgs of ash. And if you look this summarized information, it said that you need 270 grams of ashes for a pool and 270 grams of ash for a snooker cues. So since I am producing 6000 units of pool cues and each pool cue needs 0.27 kgs of ash and I am producing 12000 units of snooker cues and each of them is consuming 0.27 kgs of ash as well. Currently the ash that I am consuming is 6000 into 0.75.27 and 12,000 into 0.27. Adding both of them together will give us 4,860 kgs. How much ash did I have? I actually had 5,400 kgs. I had 5,400 kgs of ash, but I have consumed only 4,860 kgs of ash. So I have uh, an additional amount in I actually have spare amount of ash with me, which is 1500 minus 4860. I have 540 kgs of ash with me, which are unutilized. If I produce 6000 units of P and 12000 units of S, I have uh, 540 kgs of ash, which are above my requirements and uh, this is called slack. The amount which is unconsumed, the amount that I have above, over and above what was needed. However, I am consuming my entire labor hours. So as discussed in class about shadow price, uh, the shadow price exists for scarce resources only or limited resources only or critical resources only. Since ash is in excess quantity or we have slack of ash, this is non-critical scarce resource. Uh, even if we had more of ash, we cannot do anything. We cannot produce more units. We cannot earn more contribution since we only had 12,000 labor hours and they were totally consumed. The shadow price is the price that I should be willing to pay more to a laborer over and above its normal pay if he is willing to work for me or for any other critical resource. Now for craftsmen to calculate shadow price, what I do is that uh, I change my constraints. I say that what if I had one more unit of a scarce resource? For example, in this question, we had a limit of 12,000. We had 12,000 labor hours available. What if I had 12,000 and one hours? Obviously, if I had one more hour, I may have been able to produce more of units. I had ash available with me. I had excess ash. I had 540 kgs in excess, but I did not have labor hours. What if I had one extra hour? An extra hour will mean that I can produce an extra unit. A production of extra unit will mean that I can increase my contributions if I had one more labor hour. First of all, let us calculate the shadow price if i had one more labor hour the equations which we use for point of intersection of d point of intersection of d was somewhere over here and at d 
we knew that the it was the intersection of two lines if you go through the previous videos s is equals to 12000 and 0 0.5 p plus 0 0.75 s is equals to 12000 this was our equation now what if i had one more labor r this was the constraint for labor r what if i had one more labor r this inequality will become 0 0.5 p plus 0 0.75 s is equals to 12001 i am talking about point d only since this was our point where we were maximizing our profits and if i had one more labor r if i now solve these two equations together s is equals to 12000 and 0.5 p plus 0.75 s is equals to 12001 simultaneously it will be 0 0.5 p plus 0 0.75 into s is equals to 12001 0 0.75 into 12000 is 9000 12001 minus 9000 is 3001 3000 and divided by 0 0.5 is p is equals to 6002 and what will be the value of s s will be 12000 so if i had one more labor r i could have produced 6002 units of p and 12000 units of s previously i was producing 6000 units of p and 12000 units of s if i had one more labor r I could have produced two more units of P and from your original contribution equation uh, which said that uh, C is equals to 20 P plus 40 S this meant that each unit of P earns you $20 of contribution and if you had two more units you could have earned $40 of additional contribution if what if you had one extra r if you had one extra r you could have made 40 additional dollars of contribution so uh, the shadow price of labor hours is 40 per dollar This denotes that if I had one more R of scarce resource, in this case our scarce resource was labor hours, I could have made additional contribution of 40 rupees for the extra R. Now using this concept, remember that this 40 is contribution and contribution is sales revenue minus variable costs we calculated the contribution value of 40 in our first video and we did subtract the labor cost the material cost ashes and other variable costs but the thing to Remember is that this 40 when it was calculated it had the labor cost which was previously being charged by the workers which was in our question in paragraph number 2 $18 if you remember my first video we used 18 rupees as labor cost in this variable cost calculation and therefore this has already been subtracted from here but the workers what are workers saying workers are saying we will be willing to work if you read the line beneath point b it says that some of the craftsmen are offered to work overtime provided that they are paid double time for the extra hours over the contract to 12000 hours so what they want is a compensation of 18 into 2 which is 36.
now the initial 18 rupees have already been accounted for in this value but they are asking more 18 rupees for additional overtimes they work so you will conclude that if i had one more labor hour i could have made a contribution of 40 rupees but this contribution did not took account for the additional 18 rupees which the laborers are asking yes it did account for the original 18 rupees but not the additional 18 rupees so if i ask laborers to work for one additional hour they can make a contribution of 40 rupees based on previously calculated variable cost less additional variable costs uh, which the laborers are asking and I can still make $22 per hour if the laborers are willing to work overtime and therefore my decision will be yes I should let them work at an overtime rate of double the pay and earn the additional contribution furthermore what did our requirements say let us move on to requirement again It said in C, explain the meaning of shadow price and calculate the shadow price of both the labor and the craftsman. For labor, we calculated the shadow price. For material, there can be no shadow price or shadow price is nil since we will not be willing to pay anything for additional units of material because we have already had excess amount of that. Party says advice HC whether to accept the craftsman's initial offer of working overtime, discussing the rate of pay requested the quantity of hours and one other factor that HC should consider. Now on financial grounds, we know that the additional or or if we offer them double the normal rate, it will be beneficial for us. We will be making a good handsome amount of $22 contribution per hour. But there can be some non monetary factors which we should consider such as the workers may become tired or ill and therefore their efficiencies may reduce number two since they are being paid so high and over time they may willingly oh sorry they may uh, by their own start to work slowly during normal hours and wait for the overtime because uh, uh, they will think that if we are being paid 18 rupees in normal hour why shouldn't we work at a time which is being compensated at 36 rupees per hour so this will basically encourage them to slow up the working in the normal timings. Here I will end up the question but the last part is very important and we will be discussing that in uh, class. It says that uh, advice is whether to accept craftsman's initial offer of working time, discussing the rate of pay requested, we did discuss this and the quantity of hours this is really really important the quantity of hours and one other factor that HC should consider this is really important how much quantity of hours will you ask your craftsman to work remember that you had only 540 kgs of excess ash available if you increase your labor hours the consumption of this extra material will also increase so this is a really uh, tricky part which will be explained in class.